Hi, Connect Groups, and happy Friday. We're thinking about the Mother's Day sermon and looking at 2 Timothy, really for uh, an example of how to pass on the faith, which we saw from a grandmother to a mother to a son in Lois, Eunice, and Timothy. Uh, one of the conversations I had over the last several years was with a college ministry of the Summons of God. One of the ministers there was explaining to me how difficult, even in his own life, it is uh, seemingly to pass on the faith to his children uh, because he had come out of um, really a, a secular home, had you know dabbled in the, the drug culture of uh, the university campus, and someone gave him a Bible, someone introduced him to Jesus Christ, and his life was radically changed. So he has this salvation story, but his children didn't grow up in that kind of secular environment. And uh, now as, as, a, as a parent, how do we pass on the faith in a meaningful way, in a way that our children and grandchildren would want to also follow Jesus? That perhaps their deliverance from sin may look different than uh, a, a conversion that involved deliverance from drugs or, or a similar kind of behavior. But nonetheless, our sin is... Uh, is still our main issue that we need deliverance and saving from. So Timothy, uh, Paul's letter to Timothy gives three areas that we pointed out that have some uh, meaning and capacity for us to think through and pray through, and and uh, certainly to set an example for us. And the three categories were that we should have a sincere faith, a personal faith, and scriptural faith. Sincere faith, personal faith, and scriptural faith. And in so doing, uh, Lois to Eunice and Eunice to Timothy, the faith was transmitted and grabbed a hold of in, uh, in a sincere and heartfelt and active way. What I want to ask you to do is perhaps you're in that uh, connect group and you had the example of a godly mother or father, or perhaps a godly a grandmother or grandfather, someone in your family passed on the faith. Share that story one with another and try and glean from it. Even jot down what are the traits of, of the various stories that you heard. What are the things that we can learn from our own history and then think and put against this scripture of sincere faith, uh, personal faith, and scriptural faith so that we can then have an action plan an approach to, to raising our children and grandchildren. Secondly, perhaps you didn't grow up in a Christian home or have a Christian influence but came to faith uh, through a friend or through an evangelistic outreach or, or by God's grace encountered him directly. But I would encourage you to also share uh, from the, that perspective. What are you looking for in someone? What qualities are you looking to follow? What would be meaningful to you to draw you in to faith in Jesus Christ? So that you can have on one hand the experience of growing up in a Christian influence, and then the other hand, what would you want to see in a Christian that would help draw you in? And, and write those down and then pray that we, the body of Christ, we at Living Word Church, and certainly uh, those in your connect group would be able to embrace and live in those values. Pray that our Christian families could pass on the faith to their children and grandchildren. Pray for our church members in this regard. This is a significant test of our faith. There's nothing easy about it. Uh, we would see that in, in the scripture that we read, and we would think about that for only seconds in our own life and realize how daunting of a task this may seem. So pray for one another, encourage one another, and let's build one another up. Lastly, I'll just share from my own story. It was trying to think through my grandparents and, and the faith transmission to my mother. It came from both sides of the family and kind of merged together so that on my father's side, his mom and dad were uh, church-going, believing Christians. Although I wouldn't say that their faith was personal in the way I understood it, but it was sincere in terms of church attendance and uh, reading that daily bread devotional was always present in the home. Uh, but when I talked with them about their personal faith, I realized that, that it was there and it was active and we had a tremendous time of prayer together around their kitchen table. 
But that church going and sincere faith was transmitted to my father so that when I was young, even though my father, I would say, still has uh, 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 not very actively demonstrated a personal faith, at least publicly, what he did instill was going to church. And in that, my mother, as well as myself, were caught into that lifestyle of going to church. And there, because the Word of God is living and active, my mother received a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, being born again, and then introduced the Scriptures into our home beyond the Daily Bread devotional. So we see that these things are, are building upon one another, and that by God's grace, faith was, was imparted to me uh, in such a way, or set as an example in such a way that I could grab a hold of it. So I want to encourage you that it, it, it really is God's grace at work in our family. We may not have all the puzzle pieces put together exactly in the right order, but I do thank God that in His provision, He's using the family unit as a main means of transmitting faith to the next generation. So please have this wonderful conversation, share, write things down, then pray one for another, pray for our church, that we, uh, the body of Christ, will live out our faiths in sincerity, we'll live it out personally, we'll live it out scripturally, in Jesus' name.